Alrighty, so as you can see, I did use the marking pen. Now, I will be using the Tide pen to get these marks out, just to make sure. So the very first step that you should have done was to stay stitch both your front neck and your back neck. Now let me talk about the back here for a second. I have it pinned here inside out so that you can see it. It does call for making a placket. Now instead of trimming this, I have chosen to do a seam finish that I would then just continue this fold all the way through and then be slip stitching this seam on either side so that it is flat. Again, that will be just a very small slip stitch grabbing just that one thread of the actual shirt fabric. Now, your pleats in your back they are a little bit different. They do start out small, get a little larger, and then go back to small. And this is to follow princess curving. If you haven't done this yet, what you want to do is pin um, kind of a lot, actually, so you can follow that curve up to where your marking is and then back out and in again. And then, as with all, they do press towards the center. Just because you have a center seam does not mean that your darts don't press towards center. Just like in the front here, the darts still press towards center. And with these pleats, now you want to press them into place. You do not stitch all the way through. You just have these markings to guide you. You then stitch them at the very top and then you do have the one pleat that comes all the way over here. Again, I have this pin so that I can do some hand finishing in here and really keep that um, nice and finished inside. It doesn't call for that. I just did choose to do a quarter inch press on that raw edge first before I guided it all the way over and I did that on both sides so that it will again have that very finished same seam finish that is in the back and what will be on the sides as well. Now along with a button at the neck in the back this also does have a side zipper so what we'll be doing next is our shoulder seams and our neck facing. Now our neck facing is going to be a little bit more tricky. You do want to make sure that you have that inner facing done as well on it. You should have two fronts and four backs cut so that you have that ability to encase it completely so that all of your raw edges on your neck will be completely encased. And then from there, the next step is, go step is going to be that side seam zipper on the left-hand side. And I have not yet decided if I'll be putting that in by hand or if I will be using the machine. You can do both. Both are completely acceptable and options that you can do. And then from there, your next step will be your bottom facing here where this curves but you do want to put that side zipper in first. Now your side seams will not meet your back and front. Your front will be a little shorter due to the accounting for that facing that you will be putting on. So hope that you're following along okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Again, these pleats can be a little tricky. So what I did was I did, as you can see on this one side that then is going to tuck over, which is the right side, I pinned them flat all the way so that I can see it. However, they're not stitched. This left side is also an acceptable option to work with. It really is going to be a personal preference. I've left them open. And that, again, it just is what you're more comfortable with. You do not want to stitch them down, though. You do want that looseness of a pressed pleat not a stitched pleat and that will give a different look and yes it is going to have a little bit of a invisible keyhole opening here so keep that in mind you do not stitch that closed that will be lapping over when you put in that neck binding and facing that this then will be tucking over one side to add that finished cross look so, hope that you're enjoying!